left. In the air to left. In the air to left and in the glove of Jose Tabata. Raise the Jolly Raja. Pirates, very impressive. They win it. Five to three, and they've taken the first two games against a very good ball club, and they've got to be feeling good about themselves. A lot more work to be done, but let everybody here enjoy the moment. And more than just a moment for this young Pirates team, bidding the Phillies for the second straight night in front of the largest crowd to ever see a baseball game at PNC Park. Today, the Pirates go for the sweep over their rivals from Philadelphia. Hi again, everybody, along with Bob Walk. I'm Tim Neverett. What an atmosphere in here last night. That was great, and you always want to perform well on the big stage. And uh, our guys were up to it last night. Charlie not only had the good sinker going, but watch this curveball. Just froze him right there. Over Bay. We, know, we love two-out RBIs. Watch this one. Two-out RBI double off the fence. And he wasn't done there. He flicks this ball down the opposite line. That goes for a triple. Overbay almost hit for the cycle last night. And Andrew McCutcheon, he's always clutch. Hitting the balls all over the ball player. Twice he goes down the line last night. Another two out RBI. McCutcheon coming up big in a big game. And those three guys, the subject of our PNC achievement today for the achiever in you. Today facing Roy Halliday. Overbay three out of five in his career. Doc Halliday is a tough pitcher to face, the reigning Cy Young Award winner in the National League. Oh, he may be the, the best pitcher in baseball. He is no holiday, that's for sure, for the hitters. They're going to have to be at the top of their game to beat him. And his opposition today for the Pirates, right-hander James McDonald. Uh, McDonald has been pitching extremely well. He'll need to, to win a pitcher's duel this afternoon. James McDonald taking on Roy Halliday as the Buckos try to broom the bad guys back to Broad Street. That's next on Root Sports. Go, Mark. Go. Sports is sponsored by Barrel Automotive. Barrel.com. Definitely worth the click. Let's go, Bucks.
Beautiful day in Pittsburgh as the Pirates take on the Phillies, trying to win their third in a row against the National League Eastern Division leaders. Pirates just a game under 500 to start the day today on a kid's day Sunday. Great day for all. Another big crowd expected. And there is a buzz around the Berg about the Bucks right now. Let's take a look at Charlie Manuel's lineup. Shane Victorino moves into the leadoff spot today with Jimmy Rollins out. Polanco, Utley, Howard, Abanez, Carlos Ruiz back behind the plate. Dominic Brown and right. Wilson Valdez at short hitting eighth. And Roy Halladay, the pitcher, batting ninth against Pirates right-hander James McDonald. Let's take a look at Jay Mack. Uh, he is, uh, as I said earlier, he's been pitching as well, especially of late. He's uh, slowly getting that ERA of his down. So, uh, I think we're going to have another pitcher's duel this afternoon. That's the way it looks to me. And uh, you know, the Pirates are a big, getting a lot of clutch hits, hitting with runners in scoring position, uh, and that's the the key element. That along with playing good defense to win these close pitcher's duels. Some Pine Richland kids right there at the new Pedro Alvarez batting practice jerseys they got today. It was important to get those that come in on today because he got his new number, right. number 24 this year. So. Definitely a, a worthwhile shirt to grab. That's the Pine Richland guy they come to watch, Neil Walker. A lot of folks reaching into the closet today and bringing out the uh, cleaning utensils, bringing the broom to the oh, ballpark yeah. today. Yeah, it's not going to be easy, but uh, definitely doable. So we are underway with Shane Victorino taking a strike. Nothing in one the count and J Mac delivers. Strike two. Good crisp fastball at 94. Victorino has just one hit in the series. Happened in the fourth inning last night with a little tennis racket shot out to left center field. It was a one two pitch and he just kind of flicked it over Ronnie Sedeno's head at shortstop. One two and a check swing right down to Josh Harrison and there is one down. AGH Sports Medicine injury update for the Phillies their normal leadoff hitter Jimmy Rollins. And look at this pitch right here right off the inside of that right knee. Rollins would hit a double after this and got it out for a couple of innings before being replaced by Wilson Valdez. He's out of the lineup today. That's our injury update. Thanks to our friends at Allegheny General Hospital Sports Medicine, official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Phillies are certainly having a tough time keeping their everyday lineup healthy and in there at the same time. 0 1 pitch to Polanco. And a ground ball to third. Backhanded nicely by Harrison. Two away. Good job by the newcomer, Josh Harrison. Defensively for the Pirates. Xavier Paul starts in left field today. McCutcheon in center. Garrett Jones gets the start in right. Different looking left side of the infield with Harrison at third. Wood at shortstop. Sedano the day off today. And Dusty Brown doing the catching. So Wood moves from third base to shortstop. He's had a lot of time at short. And Dusty Brown, another start behind the plate. Giving Snyder the day off today. Chase Utley. Takes ball one. Alley hitting only 195, just 41 at bats uh, since coming off the disabled list and starting the year on the DL. Didn't have a spring training. So he's going to get hot. He's going to start hitting. I just hope uh, it's after today's over with. Be nice. He's, he's, he's not the, quite there yet. When, when he is his normal self, he's one of the best hitters in the league. Be glad to see him move out of here while he's slumping. 2 0 pitch on the way to Utley. He popped it up. That will be out of play. Calling the balls and strikes, Angel Hernandez. Angel Campos at first. Chad Fairchild, the umpire at second base. And the crew chief, country Joe West. He's down there at third. Doesn't have to wear the West vest today when he's on the bases. Something he wears. As padding underneath when he is umpiring behind the plate as he did last night. 2 1 pitch. And Utley to the right side. That's past Walker. And Chase Utley a two out single. Yeah, 
was hit crisply, but still just a, a ground ball that uh, a three hopper was hit in the right spot. You can see that it wouldn't hit all that hard because Walker had about four steps before that ball was by him. Five time All Star Jay Sutley aboard, and here's Ryan Howard. Want to know to Howard. 243 the average for the big first baseman, 12 home runs. Howard had a terrific month of April, and so did the Phillies, by the way, going 18 and 8 in April. June has not necessarily been the Phillies' month in recent years. They've started this month out 0 and 3 with a loss to the Washington Nationals before coming here and losing two in a row. Pirates hoping to make it three in a row. The Phillies have not been above 500 for the month of June since 2007 when they went 15 and 13. Last June, 13 and 13. There goes Utley at a good jump pitch fouled back. So Utley will go back to first base. The ball and two strikes the count to Howard. In the National League Eastern Division, Philadelphia two game lead over Florida, Milwaukee. A run better than the Marlins last night, so the difference stayed at two. Atlanta two and a half. Mets got a win over the Braves last night, five nothing, and the Nationals nine off the pace. One two, tapper foul. At that time, uh, McDonald held the ball in the stretch position for a little while. I think he was taking it uh, for granted that Utley wasn't going to run with the big man at the plate. Two outs, but. Utley had a running start. Fortunate that ball was fouled off. Not much of a lead. So if you can have momentum going towards second base as the pitcher starts his move, you don't have to have a big lead. That's what Utley did that two pitchers ago when he was making an attempt at the steal. Howard hit into the shift twice last night, grounding out. To Neil Walker in right field. The guys that don't have the blazing speed, if you can just get them flat footed over there, make them stop, no momentum, then they're going to have a hard time ever stealing. Utley goes again, swing and a miss. And Howard strikes out. J Mac comes it by him for a half inning, no score. Pirates coming to bat. Perez replica batting practice jerseys on another Kids Day Sunday. Great crowd on hand here as the youngsters as well as the older fans hoping the Pirates can pull off the three game sweep. Great crowd at PNC Park this afternoon. Our starting lineup for the Pirates brought to you by Toyota. Xavier Paul leads off. Josh Harrison in the two spot. Andrew McCutcheon third. Good speed at the top of the order. Walker Overbay, Garrett Jones, Brandon Wood, Dusty Brown hits eighth. James McDonald bats ninth. Against 2010 Cy Young winner 
Troy Holiday. And the Pirates have been able to use that speed at the top of the owner very well. Halliday deals a strike as he will often during the course of the game. The, the speed of Paul and Tavita McCutcheon yesterday created a run out of not a whole lot. Talked to Clint Hurdle about attacking Roy Halliday today and give us the thumbnail of the scouting report. He said, well, we're just telling our hitters pick a side of the plate. He can split the plate in two. But pick a side and stay with that approach. And Xavier Paul does that and pulls it into right field for a base hit. The X Factor with a leadoff single. Well, up and in. So the strike zone presented by Range Resources had that ball off the plate. But Paul was still able to turn on it, line it into the outfield. Josh Harrison trying to get Paul around. Harrison starting his fifth big league game, bunts it up the first base side foul. All right, Bob, let's check out our Hyundai inside the pitch on Philly starter Roy Halliday. Well, Halliday takes no holidays, that's for sure. He, he works all the time. Uh, you know he's always going out there throwing 100 pitches. Uh, I think six and two thirds is the least he's pitched all year. And uh, speaking of working, he loves working under the sun. 197 ERA in day games. That's six starts. Harrison punched this one fair. Halliday throws to Utley, covering. Sacrifice one four on the putout. And Xavier Paul becomes the first base runner today to get into scoring position. Yeah, the Pirates love doing this. They they, they want to move runners, get them in the scoring position. Get some at bats with runners in scoring position anytime you can. And, uh, and with the fast guys like Harrison, it's not always just an automatic sacrifice either. As, uh, those sacrifice bunts can be messed up, they can be dropped, somebody loses their footing, slips as they're feeling it. With the speed that the Pirates have at the top of their lineup. The sacrifice bunt isn't always just an automatic out. And McCutcheon shows bunt. Pulls it back, takes ball one. Maybe the Pirates get involved in a little small ball. Runs could be at a premium when you're facing a pitcher of Halliday's caliber. Oh, that first run yesterday was a, a chopper that Tabata, with his speed, turned into a double. Chopper over the third baseman's head. 1 0, ground ball to short. Wilson Valdez throws on to first. Two down, and down to third base goes Xavier Paul. Defensively behind Halliday this afternoon. In the outfield left to right, Ibanez, Victorino, and Dominic Brown. Polanco at third. Wilson Valdez takes over for Jimmy Rollins at short again today. Utley and Howard on the right side with Carlos Ruiz, who always catches Roy Halliday, back there again today. Wilson Valdez has been a journeyman. He has been all over the world, literally, to play baseball. Back one year, split time between a professional team in Korea and Japan. Before coming back and joining the Dodgers organization. You know, Walker takes strike one. Seems like that'd be kind of unusual. Korea and Japan. In the same year. Not very often do you see that. It was in 2008. He was in uh, Korea playing for the Kia team and then played for the Colt Swallows that same season. 0 oh 2 to Neil Walker. Looking for his first hit of the series. 0 oh 2. Just off the outside edge. Now that one didn't, uh, didn't miss by much. Take a look at the strike zone presented by Range Resources. Does it say it is? It's outside. Pulls this one foul. Two men out. Xavier Paul, the runner at third base. Looks like another full house here today, Bob. 
I don't see many empty seats. This is a very impressive Sunday afternoon crowd here. Wow. Look at that. Far corner. Is full. One two to Walker. Hit well to right center. Get up. Going back. It is gone. Two run home run for the Pittsburgh kid. And the Pirates strike first against Halliday. Where's those Pine Richmond kids now? How about that? Electricity at PNC Park early in the ball game. A two run shot. More ribeyes. More ribeyes. 39 RBIs for Walker now. And the crowd into it early. Thanks to that guy. Over Bay lifts this one foul and out of play. Take a look, see where that pitch was. Uh, up and in, tomahawked it. Oh, on a one two count, was able to get the head of the bat on that pitch up and in. Sixth home run given up by Halliday this season. Leads National League second baseman with 39 runs batted in. Fourth with eight home runs, and this guy needs more All Star votes. It's incredible to me, uh, but I understand why. Chase Utley, who has barely played this year due to injury, is third in the voting, and Neil Walker is not even in the top five. Now the voting is a popularity contest. It's not really true who the All Star is. Ricky Weeks and Brandon Phillips up there, and Walker should be right with him. And Overbay swings and strikes out, but the Buckos strike first. Neil Walker dials long distance. Two nothing, but. With home plate umpire Angel Hernandez after his starting pitcher Roy Halliday did once he struck out Lyle Overbay. There was a bit of a, a chat in between them. Pirates with a 2 0 lead. Raul Ibanez is leading off against James McDonald. 1 0 the count. Apparently, uh, Halliday did not like Angel's strike zone. 1 and 1 to Ibanez. And now the shift being employed as Josh Harrison will move over to the second base side. Brandon Wood will stay at short. And a ground ball to Neil Walker in right field. He sets up, throws him out, and there's one away. Go back and look how the inning ended after the overbase strikeout here. Watch what Roy Holiday does. 
Uh, Halliday's uh, looking at, at the umpire, looks at him again, and uh, now they start chatting. And this is all about the strike zone. I'm sure it was about that uh, that 0 2 pitch, I think, to Walker. And then, uh, you know, Charlie, he can't let his uh, star starting pitcher get thrown out of the game, so he went out there and took over the argument. Didn't really last all that long, but definitely uh, is significant because if Halliday chirps too much, he'd get thrown out of the ball game, and that would be huge for the Phillies and, well, obviously for us too. McDonald delivering 0 1 to Ruiz. Nothing into the count. No balls, two strikes. Carlos Ruiz, 242 hitter. He was not in the lineup last night. Fouls this one away. The reason he wasn't in last night, Dane Sardinia would. End up catching Kyle Kendrick, but it was sort of the reverse philosophy. Typically, a catcher will get a day game off after a night game. However, Ruiz is the regular catcher for Halliday, so Charlie Manuel sat him last night and started him today on full rest. And he goes down looking. Locked him up with a hook. Saw Charlie do this uh, several times in last night's game with his breaking ball. J Mac. Takes the same path. Like it just nicked the inside corner. Here's Dominic Brown, right fielder. 293 hitter. Two down. And Brown will take a strike. I think he was taken all the way because he showed Bunn awfully early. He just he was going to take a pitch, so he was going to show the bunt. Try to bring the infield in, but didn't work. That's strike two. The Pirates doing a little more shifting this series defensively. There's some rhyme and reason as to why certain personnel go where on certain counts. And Ibanez, they'll shift during the count. In case he bunts early. And Brown down the left field side. That'll go foul. As soon as they, they get either. Uh, as soon as they get out of any kind of a hitter's count. Or if they get ahead of him, uh, especially obviously with two strikes where he can't bunt, then they're going to go ahead and shift. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Got him. And Brown will tag him out as Dominic Brown gave himself up. A 1 2 3 in it. Three strikeouts in the game now for James McDonald. Take a look at our Barrel Automotive League leaders stats. And 
active career ranks wins 176 for Roy Halladay. Eric Jones takes a healthy cut for strike one. Ranks first and winning percentage complete games strikeouts fifth and in innings pitched. Barrel Automotive definitely worth the click at Barrel.com. Roy Halladay extremely accomplished. You don't hear his real name much though. One one. There's a strike. You know what his real name is? It's not Roy. Harry. Harry. No, I, I, in fact, I've never heard that. Harry Leroy Halliday the third. I always thought it was Roy. There's a reason you haven't heard it very much. He doesn't want a lot of people to know. But it's a family name. I've been uh, passed down and. He's just always gone by Roy as a kid. Until now. Two balls and two strikes. Well he's pretty good he can. He called whatever he likes. Yeah. He'll answer to Doc and Roy and that's about it in fact. When he was going growing up in school and they called roll in school they called Harry. Halliday and he wouldn't answer. So his dad would get phone calls from the school saying is your son in school today we've got to mark his absent. <laughs> Parrot at work. And there's a base hit for Jones. Hits away from the shift. Garrett Jones, a leadoff single. Let's check in with the third member of our crew today, Dan Potash. Dan? All right, Tim, thank you very much. You know, some would say that Roy Halliday actually pitched last night for the Pirates. I say this because after Jimmy Rollins faced Charlie Morton, he actually told Roy Halliday, quote, hey, dude, that guy really looks like you. Earlier, I asked Charlie about the similarities between his delivery and Halliday's. Halliday was a guy that I watched a lot, and um, because I came to spring training, like I'm, I'm at options, fighting for a spot on the team, and they, they come up with this, this idea, and I, I needed a reference, and and really, I mean, he's he's one of the best, if not the best. So, um, and, and he was, and he, he he does what I was trying to do. So, I watched him and tried to learn something from. Him. Well, guys, I guess if you're going to reference someone, he's a pretty good choice, huh? I would say he's a very good choice. And, you know, for a guy like Rollins, who's seen how they pitch so often, to make that reference, it's got to be true. I can remember that uh, very uh, early in April when we went into uh, St. Louis, uh, Pujols, telling one of our guys, I'm not sure, I Ryan think Doman. Doman, yeah, yeah, that uh, he just said, hey, I can't hit this guy. And we're talking Albert Pujols saying that. Right. Uh, you know, you have to throw everything that's been done against Morton out the window now and start his stats all over again. All those matchups, you know, and all that kind of thing. It's just it doesn't make any difference. He is a total different pitcher, and he is the guy in the rotation. I'm sure when when teams come in to play the Pirates, they look to see if Morton's pitching because they they don't want to hit off that guy. <laughs> I, I guarantee that's that's. What goes on in that opposition clubhouse with those hitters? They want to know what what, what day is Charlie Morton pitching? Brandon Wood hits a looper. Valdez will get underneath it, and Jones is hung up. Throw back to first base, and Jones is out. Double play for Philadelphia. Now Garrett uh, just wandered down there a little too far. Uh, he's in, in between a rock and a hard place a little bit. He's got to go far enough to where if the ball is not caught, he won't get uh, forced off second base. But in case it is caught, you can't be so far that you get doubled off. Uh, he had, had a hard time putting the brakes on there. You could see him slide a little bit. Dusty Brown. Fouls this one away. His hand went right in the glove yeah. of Howard. Maybe trying to knock the ball loose. That was going to be his only chance. <laughs> Down to third. Polanco throwing on the run. The Pirates 
done in the second inning. At the two full of PNC Park, Pirates two, Phillies nothing. Half of the third inning. You can take the Pirates with you wherever you go this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Pirates game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit Pirates.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv. Baseball everywhere. And the brooms also make nice flagpoles. Wilson Valdez started that double play last inning. Came in for Jimmy Rollins last night when Rollins exited in the third. James McDonald, three punch outs. He struck out the last two men he faced. Valdez batting eighth for the Phillies. Well, you were saying last night that there was, before Rollins got hurt, Utley was going to have the day off today. Utley was supposed to have the day off today. But when off. Jimmy Rollins got hurt, he's out of the lineup. They're short an infielder, so Utley back in. Two and zero to Valdez. Now it's two and one. I remember last year when Rollins was hurt against the Pirates and didn't play or wasn't supposed to play. I remember sitting down in the dugout and Charlie Manuel telling me he was going to have the day off the next day. So he reported it during the game. He wouldn't play tomorrow. Next day, somebody get banged up. The next day, he's in there. So even though you're scheduled to have a day off, sometimes it doesn't always. Work out for you, depending on what happens to the other personnel in the ball club. Slow roller. And Walker hurries it to first for the out. Still not 100% for the fight, Phils. Joe Blanton, an elbow problem. Brad Lidge, 60 day DL, a rotator cuff, never good. And Brian Schneider, a hamstring issue. Brad Lidge announced since the 25th of March. They've got the majority of their players back. At least their position players. The first night they all played together was Friday night here. It's so hard in baseball to have those kind of plans because it you play so many games. Halliday hits one deep to right field. Paul going back and he makes a nice catch. Uh, Garrett Jones rather. Beg your pardon. 162 games over six months. You're out there almost every single night. See it. Holiday kind of surprising everybody with opposite field power. Yeah, Jones running it down nicely. Not so used to seeing Xavier Paul out there the last few days. And Jones ran a, a tough month of May. Getting just 179 in May. Didn't get as much playing time out there as he would have liked. And trying to start things off better here in the month of June. And he's done that with a base hit today. Put some good defense alongside that. 
Two men out, nobody on for the Phillies. Shane Victorino, second time up. He grounded out to Josh Harrison at third to start the game. Victorino came off the disabled list Friday. As a result, John Mayberry was sent back to Lehigh Valley, but came back the next day, and Victorino slaps on the right. Two out single for the Phillies center fielder. Now they had Utley on the move trying to steal. You sure would think the, uh, the flying Hawaiian be looking for a spot to run with two outs. Been a bunch of moves for the Phillies. Mayberry's already back. Ross Glover on the paternity. Uh, on paternity leaves. Wife had a baby girl. And then Phillies sending pitcher Mike Zagurski, who pitched an inning last night, back to AAA. Right hander David Herndon has taken his spot. This one to the backstop bounces right back to Dusty Brown, but he'll have no throw. Wild pitch puts Victorino at second base. Catcher just has no chance when you throw a fastball out there. 93 mile an hour. Not sure what happened with that one. McDonald every now and then will uncork one that's way off the mark for whatever reason. 1 0 to Polanco. Ball one strike now to the Philly third baseman. This guy has been playing terrific defense during this series. It's been a well played uh, couple of games for both clubs. Running the bases uh, fairly well. Pirates have done a pretty good job of taking an extra base when it's uh, appropriate. There goes Victorino down to third, a ground ball that way. Harrison plays it in the hole, and he throws him out. And the Phillies are done. After two and a half, Pirates leading the Phils to zip. Two hits. Pirates a two to nothing lead as we move on to the bottom of the third inning. Along with Dan Potash and Bob Walk. I'm Tim Neverett here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon at PNC Park. Roy Halliday dealing to his opposite number, James McDonald. Ball one. McDonald has a pair of hits and 21 at bats. And he goes to left field. Here comes Ibanez. He's not going to get it. Three straight innings where the Pirates have had a leadoff single. I always love it too, when, it's, when it's the pitcher that gets that leadoff single because now you have the top of the lineup coming up behind him. Banya is just maybe playing a little too deep for a left hand hitting pitcher. And it hit his glove. It just bounced out. That would not have been a trap. I mean, it hit leather. 
J Mac aboard for Xavier Paul who singled and scored in the first. Third baseman Polanco in on the grass. And Paul takes a strike. Now, Tim, I think a lot of left fielders they they realize how much room is behind them because that fence is so deep. It's hard for them that really come in and play shallow like they normally would with a left hand hitting pitcher. Look how much room is behind him. And a bunt. And will get McDonald into scoring position. Here's a good word for today. Jimmy Rollins talking about Charlie Morton last night. Dan Potash made reference to it earlier. He was very good even after the first couple of pitches. I told Roy. Hey, that dude really looks like you. It was pretty impressive. You can uh, see the, uh, the similarities in their deliveries. Both guys that uh, you know, they'll throw out there a little bit three quarters, and that is what gives them that movement. You know, it's all off the arm angle. Creates a little bit of side spin, and that fastball they can stay behind the ball the entire time with their fingers. They don't have to come off the side. They stay behind it, and the arm angle still gives them that rotation that gives the movement. Last night, seven innings, six hits, 103 pitches. Left handers were five out of 17 against him last night. Right handers, one for eight against Charlie Morton last night. Morton also now has gone eight straight games without giving up a home run. That's the first time since Chris Benson did that. I believe that was back in 2004. Well, it, you know the the left-handers that are hitting him good. You know, have a batting average over 300. Most of their hits, the vast majority of them, are just singles to left field and center field. They're just you know flicking the ball the other direction. They aren't really turning on it, driving it for extra bases or over the fence. Now they're they're taking what Charlie will give them and just flick the ball the other way. Look at that shot. What a crowd. What a weekend here. Not a bad seat in this place. No, there isn't. Payoff pitch coming to Harrison. And he hits a one hopper to Valdez. Pretty close at first base. And Harrison is out. Yeah, it was on a one hopper. It was a broken bat one hopper, but still Harrison digging hard down the line. Uh, Valdez uh, just doesn't get the right grip on the ball. Any little thing is wrong. Harrison's safe. He's only thrown out by six inches. Two men out for Andrew McCutcheon. Cutch three out of four last night. Two doubles, two runs batted in. Has 31 runs knocked in, second on the club behind Neil Walker. Walker after the two run home run in the first inning. 39 RBI. 0 1. There's nothing in two. Lead off single by James McDonald. He leads the Pirates pitching staff and hits now, by the way. Yes, yeah, ex outfielder should play a little bit in the minor leagues and low A ball, rookie ball. Ogden, Utah is an outfielder. And then hit his way back onto the pitching staff. Yeah. <laughs> so he's not that good of a hitter. <laughs> One and two to McCutcheon. Still red here in the stands, but everybody excited about this matchup. One, two. And it's two and two. It's been kind of fun is to hear the Phillies fans chants and then the Buccos oh, fans chants like and then a, the Pirates fans drown them out. It's been like a second game going on in the, in the stands. Strike three call. Just nicked the inside corner. And McCutcheon is gone. You're watching Pirates Baseball on Root Sports.
Sports is sponsored by Toyota. Buy right the first time and save more. Visit your local Toyota dealer for details. And by AT&T. Let's go Bucks. Let's take a look at our trivia question brought to you by AT&T Mobility. 2010, Halliday became the fifth pitcher in history to win the Cy Young in both leagues. Who were the other four? Remember, he won the Cy Young in 2003 with Toronto. Who were the other four? Give me the answer next half inning. Andrew McCutcheon thought he was looking at a ball here. Now, watch this uh, strike three pitch and see where it ends up on these uh, strike zone brought to you by Range Resources. You can see that that's outside. I guess that goes along with the old saying the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Remember he was complaining earlier about a pitch that was off the plate that was called a ball. Yeah. This time it was called a strike. Chase Utley leads off against McDonald. First pitch high. Utley had a two out single in the first inning. He would be stranded. Came back to play for the Phillies on the 23rd of May after rehabbing due to a knee situation that kept him out of every spring training game. He had nine rehab games in single A Clearwater. Gaylord Perry, I think, is one of those guys. I'm going to guess that you're right. Um, Roger Clemens had to be another. Winning with Boston and uh, See, he won it with uh, Toronto as well. Yeah, I, I don't know if he won and then in the National League. I think he did win. Didn't he did. with Houston? I know, usually he didn't start pitching till June. Well, he was on his own program there yeah, for a while, where he yeah, just kind of traveled when he wanted to, showed up when it was his day exactly. to pitch. Exactly. I'm not sure he won one with. I, I mean, it could be, but I'm. I don't know. I wouldn't be convinced. I have to think about that a little bit. Three and two now to Utley. Three balls, two strikes. Chase Utley standing in. And a three, two delivery. Walked him. Root Sports is joining Pirates Charities for a live auction next Friday night at 6:30. You can bid on great items like a Pirates Alumni Clubhouse party for you and 30 of your friends. Visit RootSports.com today for a complete list. Of auction items. A road trip to Chicago is on that list as well, I understand. Definitely a can't miss telecast on Friday. All kinds of great stuff. Shift is on for Ryan Howard, throw over to first. And when we look at the shift, we see Josh Harrison in the middle, where the second baseman would be. The reason Clint Hurdle moves him over there instead of just moving him over to where Brandon Wood is playing is because Harrison is much more comfortable. As a second baseman, he gets lots of second base time and had in the minor leagues. And with the runner at first here, Neil Walker not playing in right field because they want to increase their chances of getting a double play. If you notice last night with Wood and Sedano in the lineup, Sedano just moved over to second base because he's comfortable on that side, and Wood stayed right where he is. On the shortstop side of second. This one goes to the backstop and down to second base goes up. That's the second pitch that's gotten away from Dusty Brown like that. Now, the other one uh, definitely was not his fault. That was a fastball that was well in the dirt and way outside. Um, not so sure this one uh, maybe should have been gloved. Well, that one didn't hit anything. It just went straight back, ticked off the glove. Two balls and no strikes to Howard now as Utley is in scoring position. And that one's high. Three and oh. Well, three balls, no strikes to Ryan Howard. And J Mac wants to keep that tying run off base here. And 
does not. Back to back walks to start the fourth. Oh, a very nice event going on tonight, hosted by Paul Mahalam and his family. It's the annual fundraiser and his fight against cancer. It'll be at the Gilda's Club in the Strip District, 6 to 9 p.m. Tickets are $60. Still time to get some tickets and go over. It really is a nice event. You get to mingle with a lot of the Pirates players and staff. And, uh, of course, Paul and his family really appreciate your support. 412-338-1919. 412-338-1919. Gilda's Club of Western Pennsylvania. Small the street in the Strip District. Well, James McDonald got the shovel out and dug himself a little hole this inning with back-to-back -back walks. And you know, when you know you're going to be involved in a pitcher's duel like this afternoon, you, you boy, you, you have to stay out of these kind of situations, these self-created problems. But he can't do anything about that now. And now he has to focus and concentrate on how to get out of this problem. Right now he'll be battling Raul Ibanez. Nobody out to a board. Strike one. The next RBI that Ibanez gets will be the thousandth of his career. He would become the 26th active major leaguer to have a thousand. Alex Rodriguez of the Yankees, the active leader in that category, with over 1,800, closing in on 1,900. Ibanez fouls this one back. Nothing in two. A big out to get at the plate in Raul Ibanez. Pirates get their runs in the bottom of the first, a two run home run by Neil Walker, scoring Xavier Paul. And this one gets away from Brown. And Utley and Howard both move up. Rusty Brown having a tough time back there. You have to see what happened. He wanted a fastball up, it looked like, and I think he got a uh, looked like a changeup. He was given an awfully high target for a uh, for a changeup. So now the tying run in scoring position with nobody out. But just you know, you can't tell what the sign is with a man at second. But going from where he was given the target, I think he was expecting a fastball. McDonald stretch and the one two. Banez takes ball two. First legitimate threat by the Phillies this afternoon. Not that uh, any of their doing. <laughs> Pretty much uh, giving them this situation. This one in the air to center field. Utley will score. Throw comes into third. Cut off. It's now two to one. And Raul Abanez has the 1,000th RBI of his career. Yeah, more importantly than that, he uh, with the tying run to third base with just one out. It was a very effective sacrifice fly. Now the Pirates will. Uh, Bring the infield in. Well, maybe if it wasn't uh, Roy Halliday on the plate, maybe it concede a run, but runs might be very difficult to come by the rest of this game. So Pirates are going to take a little bit of a gamble here and bring that infield and in at least uh, close to the grass. It looks like they're going to play off it a little, maybe a step or two behind the baseline. Ruiz struck out looking first time up. He takes a strike there. Does not have a hit against the Pirates this year. Almost clipped him. Yeah, I don't know how I get out of the way of that one. Wow. That was close. 
duck down there beyond the dugout. As the camera well, the grounds crew had to jump out of the way of that ball. One and two for Carlos Ruiz. Yeah, Potash down there as well. Those guys uh, saved you, Dan, I guess. Threw themselves on the grenade for Dan Potash. Oh, he did hit him. So J Mac has put three base runners on this inning. And that, that wasn't a fastball either. No. He got him with a, I think, a, a curveball. It was either that or a changeup. Yeah, definitely a, a curveball that just came out of his hand early. Didn't really break much. Stayed up and in. It's simply wildness that has uh, created this situation for the Phillies. A walk to Utley. He has scored. A walk to Howard. He is at third base. And then Ruiz hit by a pitch. He's at first. One out. And Brown takes low. Dominic Brown struck out to end the second inning. Double play ball would be nice. That's one thing. Not that he can't get a double play ball, but being a fly ball strikeout pitcher, that makes it a little tougher. Another one of the advantages of being a sinker baller like Morton. Much easier to use that double play as a weapon. Two balls, no strikes, runners off the corners. Serious pitching coach concerned right now. Fouled on for strike one. Nobody in the bullpen throwing for the Pirates. It's quiet. With runners in scoring position, Dominic Brown has four hits in his last 11 at bats. And he's got another one. It hit the second base umpire Chad Fairchild. So that's going to be a dead ball, but a base hit. And Howard will be sent back to third. Well, how do you like that? I'm liking it a lot. Yep. And right in the foot. Charlie Manuel coming out to wonder why Ryan Howard isn't allowed to score. But the way it's set up right now, the bases will be full of Phillies with one out. Well, a break for the Pirates at that ball hit Chad Fairchild. And the score remains two to one. I'd like to have been in on that argument. I'd like to hear what Charlie was was saying. Line drive right off his foot. And Brown gets credited with a base hit, and what would have been an easy RBI is not for him. And Valdez is chasing that pitch for strike one. Well, yesterday's ball game, uh, there was a little bit of a controversy of call, and uh, Pirates able to turn it into a run. Maybe they can turn uh, this fortunate happenstance into a uh, double play ball. Yesterday, right after Overbay. Well, that is jumping out of the way. Overbay. Overbay had hit a little ball down the line, and the umpires disagreed. Fair or foul. Moving him back out of the way with a curveball. Man overboard. 1 1 pitch to Valdez. Swung on, ground ball toward the middle. Walker's got it. Steps on that. second for one. Double play. And the Pirates keep the lead. A twin killing started by Neil Walker helps the Pirates stay in front by a run. 
outstanding. So far, including defensively here with one out of the bases full. That one ticketed for center field. Walker taking away the middle, Bob. And a huge play defensively. Well, that kind of reminded me of uh, Handerhan last night. Uh, the income ball is hit like that up the middle as a pitcher. You got to let it go. Don't touch it. Uh, there, there's going to be somebody there to grab it. Handerhan last night, it was a routine ground ball to short, and he, and he tried to get it and, and, and knocked it down. And that ball right there looked like McDonald tried to catch it behind him. And it was just hit off the end of the bat. It was going to be a perfect ball right to second base. Do not touch those balls. Let them go. Let those guys make their plays out in the middle of the field. Walker behind Halliday. Nothing in two. Paul Mahalam's gotten very good at that. Uh, you know, if, of realizing, hey, I, I got to stay out of this play. Several times I've seen him this year and last year where he'll start to go for a ball and you could see his thought process as he'll jerk the glove back out of the way knowing that those guys had a play on it. Walker drills one to center field but Victorino is right there. Well it's Sunday and another Saber metric Sunday and today we've got one for you. It is war baby war wins above replacement. It is a total value metric that computes the number of wins a player's performance has generated above what a minor league replacement would generate at the same position and given the playing time it can be used to compare players at different positions and across different eras. See the numbers there. McCutcheon is a 2.3 right now the leader in baseball would be Jose Bautista at a 5.0. Well over Bay. Now a lot of these you know this, this stat for instance you know it tells you what you pretty much already know oh, this guy would be easy to replace a Roy, Roy Halliday he'd be tough to replace. But the key thing is it puts a number on it. And, and that's I think behind a lot of Saber metrics is it puts a number on it so you can compare people. 7.5 in 2003. He leads Major League Baseball this year with a 3.5. Basically a war of zero would mean that a player hasn't performed any better than a player a team could easily obtain from the minors. If you're at a 2.0 on league average 4.0 all star type player. That's pitchers he leads with 3.5. Right. As we saw, Joey Bats is at five. Yeah, he's pretty good. So, but good but that's the thing. It, it, yeah, you know, you're 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 pointing out the obvious, but you would like to put some kind of an actual number or I guess a metric to it so that you can compare people, and that's that's what this is all about. Two and out to Garrett Jones. He hit away from the shift last time for a base hit. 
taking one to left. Phillies again overshifted to the right with Chase Utley out in short right field. Looks at one on the outside corner. Two and two. That's looking in. That's a nice shot. And down on strikes goes Jones, and the inning's over. We're through four. Pirates leading two to one. Two to nothing, and the Buckos were at the ballpark a little early this morning for the Pitch for Hope Women's Baseball Clinic. About 150 ladies showing up, including our very own Lacey Collins. That's right. It all was to help raise money for the glimmer of hope and breast cancer awareness here in Pittsburgh. In fact, guys, Clint Hurdle also taking part. Now, he was kind enough to share a uh, personal side. His mother is a 19 year old, or uh, 19 year, excuse me, 19 year breast cancer survivor. So lots of good stuff going on. And by the way, uh, Lacey Collins. Actually hit a home run. Now, I know smaller field, but still a round tripper this morning. She laced one. And she, ah, there you go. <laughs> Look at that. Good arm extension. You know she uh, she played a little bit in college. The ball was a little bigger. She used it. Uh, well, all right. The softball. That's good. It was a line drive. It yeah, looked like they had a big crowd out here this morning. It was a very well attended event. One of the Halliday's up in it, two and one. Yeah, Clint's mom lives in Michigan and often gives him advice on what she thinks. Probably watching this game right now. So we say hello. Two and one to Halliday. He went the advice that uh, I have to give McDonald now is get back in that strike zone like you were those first three innings. He dodged a major bullet in the fourth, only giving up one run. And now he starts again with a walk. Not good. He walked the opposing pitcher, who was an 036 hitter to start the day. It's going to get you in trouble. Put the time run on like that. We saw what happened last uh, inning. It walked the first two, and he was in a bunch of trouble and was uh, able to. Wiggle off the hook because of a line drive off Chad Fairchild's foot out of second base, the umpire. Ball one to Victorino. McDonald started out very well through the first three and walked two in the fourth and hit a man. First guy walked Chase Utley. After a wild pitch advanced, he eventually came around to score when Raul Ibanez hit a sacrifice fly to center. Ibanez driving in the 1,000th run of his career. And the first run for the Phillies today. And uh, just as Wood got to the plate, I saw 
Ray Surge head to the telephone. Be some stirring going on in the Pirate pen. So Torino again takes outside three and zero. Oh. McDonald loses him here. Ray will come out and buy some time. Well, Reese Opt is uh, going to start throwing. And he lost him on four pitches. So J Mac in some trouble here today. Walked the first two in the fourth. Now he's walked the first two in the fifth. Well, last inning, we gave you our AT&T Mobility trivia question. 2010, Roy Halladay became the fifth pitcher in history to win the Cy Young in both leagues. Who are the other four? Did Tom Saver win? The, no, I think, uh, it, I think Randy Johnson had to be one. Oh, Roger, yeah, Roger Clemens. Johnson. You guessed Gaylord Perry, right? Gaylord Perry, yeah. And uh, maybe Pedro. Hey, Pedro Martinez. He won two in the American League. Six in the American League for Roger Clemens. I wasn't convinced that uh, Clemens won one in Houston, but obviously I was wrong. Here comes Ray. This is going to be one of those slow walks. He, he waited a long time to get out there. I don't know if if uh, McDonald doesn't start throwing strikes in a hurry. I don't know how much longer they can go with him. I mean. Look what has happened to him these last two innings as far as getting the ball in the strike zone. Well, fans, the Pirates will take on the New York Mets this Friday at 7.05. It's a free shirt Friday. All fans through the gates get a Pirates T-shirt courtesy of Bob Evans. Come to Federal Street before the game and enjoy live music and festivities during the Barrel Keel Block Party. Get your tickets at Pirates.com slash free shirt Friday. It's become a very, very popular night here at PNC Park. Of course, the Barrow Kia block party, a ton of fun prior to the game. So make your plans to join us early. Pirates taking on the Mets this Friday. Two on, nobody out. And McDonald will face Placido Polanco with Chris Reesop heating up quickly in the Pirate pen. Polanco will square, takes inside for a ball. He might be squaring, but he might just be taking also. And waiting uh, for McDonald to prove he can throw one over the plate. Pirates up by a run. Top half of the fifth. Two balls, no strikes. Ten out of twenty on first pitch strikes. That'll get you behind and counts more often than not. James McDonald may only have one more pitch in this game. Things were going very well through three innings, and then he got the walks. So the Phillies have loaded the bases without the benefit of a hit. going to be it. Clint Hurdle coming out to get James McDonald. J Mac has walked five in the game. And hit a man. So an early exit for J Mac. Pirates still with a two to one lead. And Chris Reesop coming in.
today with the 2011 first year player draft getting underway tomorrow. Our question is which of the Bucks most recent top draft picks are you most looking forward to seeing in the big leagues as a Pittsburgh Pirate text your choice to 412 412 text one for 2009 number one pick Tony Sanchez text two for last year's number one pick Jamison Tyone or text three for last year's number two pick Stetson Alley. Keep you updated on the results throughout the game and our post game show. Vote now 412 412. Remember, standard text rates apply. Get involved in these. These are fun. And last night, good response. The early response right now 71% of you say Jamison Tyone. You know, Stetson Alley would appreciate a vote. Oh, okay. I'll vote for Stetson Alley because you know why? Well, they're starting out. See? Uh, if Stetson gets up, we all get to wear cowboy hats every day, pitchers. Is that I'm, right? I'm all for that. You yeah. like that? Yeah. We're all going to have Stetsons on. All right. Checking out the votes as they come in. That is really cool. Picking up. We'll take part. Again, text 412 412. One for Tony Sanchez, two for Jameson Tyon, three for Stetson Alley. And we'll keep you updated on our poll throughout the course of the telecast today. Stetson has played some football. Well, he's got that football yeah. media guide pose. Yes, you know? that's, yes. The other, the other two have the baseball pose. Chris Reesop delivering to Chase Huntley and gets a strike in on him. James McDonald dug himself a big hole walking three that inning. The bases are full, nobody out. Two to one, Pirates with the lead. Tying run at third, go ahead run at second. And Chris Reesop with a big chore in front of him to get Utley, who was one for one with a walk. Here's the 0 1. One ball and one strike. Nice job keeping score. Love to see the kids keeping score. Not enough of them know how to do it. Got to learn it. It makes the game very enjoyable to follow when you follow along that way. Numbers coming out of our ER, coming out of our bullpen this year. Stretch by Reese up in the 1 1 to Utley. Two balls and a strike. James McDonald scratching his head trying to figure out what happened today. After three innings, he just simply lost his control. It's not the James McDonald we've seen this year. Ground ball to first over has got it. He's coming to the plate and Brown gets the force out there of Halliday. One away. Very nice. I, I think uh, ideally uh, if that would have been a for sure double play ball he gets two but this is not a double play ball. He's having to field this backing up a little bit. Plus it's going to be one of those comebackers coming across to the pitcher covering. So you're only going to get one out. Heck make it the guy going home. One down and. The Pirates are going to put a shift on with the bases loaded here. Nobody anywhere near third base. That is where Shane Victorino is. Well. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Step off. He can't do that. He could steal home. You can't do that. Victorino. Victorino can come down here. There's no nothing to stop him. Ryan Howard up with the bases full. I don't understand what's going on. Victor Reno can go down and stand 10 feet from home plate. What's going to stop him? If Victor Reno walks down here, there's the, look, look how far away everybody is. Why is he staying back? Good question. He started down the line at first before. And, and there's no reason for him not, not to. Why is he staying back at third base? I don't get it.
Victorino probably wondering why he's got so much room and freedom to roam there. If he comes two thirds of the way down the line and just stand there, you can't pitch home because as soon as you lift up your leg, now you're now you're committed to going home. Victorino just runs the rest of the way. I I don't get it. Tim, am I not seeing something? It's Joe West on our team. Uh, the only thing thing that I can think of is that they're so certain Howard as a pull hitter is going to pull it in. No, no, the I'm talking about Victorino. Oh, I, I, I understand. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're a base runner, you can go anywhere. You can go Why pretty far down the line. third base. Even if Reesop steps off, he's nowhere to throw. I think, Joe, I think Joe West has a glove on and we just don't notice it. <laughs> Howard fouls it off and he's got two strikes on it. Oh, Pirates rolling the dice here. I think it comes up good for them. Bases full of Phillies, one out. Pirates a 2 1 lead. Top half of the fifth. Ryan Howard has struck out his first at bat, walked his second at bat, has a 2 2 count on him. The 2 2 coming up. He'll get another. I would love to, to ask Victorino. I would love that right now to ask him, like, why are you standing at third base, allowing the Pirates to play everybody on that side of the field? It's a very good question. If if he forces the Pirates' hand by coming down the line, somebody's got to go play third base. You're right. I'm not. I can't get on the other side of that argument. I wish I could just to argue with you, but I can't. Well, I, I, it's like it's like I'm. I keep thinking, uh, what am, what am I not getting here? Why is Victorino standing at third? Howard awaits the 2 2 pitch. And he sends it foul on a play down the left side. Oh no, he's enjoying the uh, enjoying the wide open spaces over I mean, there. He could just walk halfway to home right now and just stand there and say, okay, now what are you going to do? You know, I, I, I don't understand. Victorino's content to let Ryan Howard try and do his thing. Well, yeah, but wouldn't he be helping him out if he took one of the infielders away and put him at third? Yep. 2-2. Two -two. Just missed outside by a little. And that fills up the count of three and two. Take a look at the strike zone presented by Range Resources. And see that ball was well outside. Now, Reesop has nowhere to put him. Tying runs at third. He's got to come with a pitch here, and Ryan Howard knows it. The payoff pitch from Chris Reesop to Ryan Howard. Fouled it back. Ryan Howard, very dangerous. Three and two. Three stops pitch. Fouled off again. A little bit of a battle going on between Chris Reesop and Ryan Howard. Heck of a battle going on. Everything away. He hadn't come to the inside half of the plate yet. And really, he's only thrown him two strikes. And 
And Howard with the base is full. Less than two outs trying to make contact with anything close. Does it again. 95 mile an hour fastball from Risa. And Victorino looking a little lonely down there at third. Polanco's at second, Utley's at first. Howard hit into a double play in the fifth inning in last night's game. Can you repeat the feat today? Here comes the 3 2 from Resop again. And it's again fouled back. Well, Howard's wearing him out. It's like being uh, like out at North Park and, and you're on a pitching machine that you just can't quite get to. And you can all you can do is just tick them one right after another. <laughs> Resop's got to find one that's going to miss the bat this time. This will be the dirty dozen right here. The 12th pitch of the at bat. Base is full and the payoff. And Brown couldn't hang on. So we'll go to pitch 13. Tough one to catch. Got up on the heel of the glove. This is a big spot in the game right now. Goes without saying. Base is full and one out. The lead in jeopardy. Reese up trying to hang on to it. Again the 3 2. And this one up in the air deep to left center. Going back McCutcheon. McCutcheon on the track in the notch makes the catch. Victorino will walk home, and that ties the game at two. So Ryan Howard wins the battle, driving in the game's tying run. Well, we saw a guy to hit it to the right spot. Nowhere else in this ballpark, anywhere, would this not have been a home run? Got it way out into that notch. And Victorino, as you said, uh, can just stroll home then. Although everybody else is tagging up. And Polanco down to third and Utley over to second base, and they will walk Raul Ibanez to set up a force play and get to the right-handed hitter, Carlos Ruiz. And the reason I say, although everyone else is tagging up, if he's just walking home, and uh, well, let's say uh, Utley gets thrown out at second base, trying to go from first to second, then the run's not going to count. So he can't take it for granted that he is going to score. He's got to get across the plate with everybody tagging behind him. Why well, it's always a good idea to sprint on a play like that. At least run hard. There's the fourth wide one, and Ibanez goes down to first. Looks still open on James McDonald right now. Well, if you've got a question for us, now's the time to ask. Grab your cell phone and text the keyword booth, followed by your question and name to 412 412, and we may answer it on the air. We will ask Mr. Walk the question of the game following the seventh inning stretch. You can text us at 412 412. Just don't ask me about Victor Reno taking his. 10 foot lead with uh, oh. nobody within 100 feet of it. I was already halfway through that text. I was going to send it in anonymously. Because I won't be able to answer that one. <laughs> Two down bases full, and Carlos Ruiz, who was hit by a pitch last time up in the fourth. I'll tell you what, if you have the answer at home, text me. I want to know why he was tied to the back. Pitch to Ruiz. He missed inside. Now, if we saw can get Ruiz here, considering what has happened in the last two innings, Pirates would take it, just giving up the one run here. Playing with fire when the Phillies have the bases full. 
And the 1 0. And it got him again. Can you believe it? Carlos Ruiz hit by a pitch by two different pitchers and two successive at bats. And it's now 3 2 Philadelphia. That one had to hurt. Got it right on the hand. The Phillies have only gotten three base hits today. Three base hits. It's it's been us helping them out. They haven't done much on their own at all. Two walks, an intentional walk, and a hit batsman. This inning. Last inning. Oh, three walks, I should say. Three walks and intentional walks, or four walks, and a hit batsman this inning. And a sacrifice fly. Last inning, two walks, a hit batsman, and a sacrifice fly. And this one is drilled down the right field side, and it will hook foul. Dominic Brown got in front of that one, a little bit too far in front. Well, at some point, they're going to come up with a big hit and, and put us away if we just continue to help them out. Putting guys on base with all these walks and hitting people. And it almost happened right there. Oh, one pitch coming to Brown. Strike two. It was Dominic Brown who had a base hit with a man at third, Ryan Howard, last inning. And it hit second base umpire Chan Fairchild. Dead ball, and Howard was sent back to third base. Prevented that run from coming across. Race stops 0 2 to Brown. One and two. Roy Halliday has been on the bench in the dugout for a long time. 27 minutes so far he's been sitting out. That includes the pirate pitching change. It's a long time for a starting pitcher to sit out on one side. It's like a rain delay. Ground ball to first. Overbay will handle it. He'll step on the bag. Pirates give up two. Considering. Halfway through the fifth the PNC Park. James McDonald struggled today. Pirates down by just a run. By Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks.
This day in Pirates history from our friends at Day Automotive, June 5th, 1966, in a 10 5 Bucks win over Houston. Willie Stargell went 5 for 5 with two home runs, two singles, and a double, along with five runs batted in to give him nine consecutive hits in two days. Thanks to Day Automotive for this day in Pirates history. Pirates down to Doc Halliday by a run now in the bottom of the fifth. Brandon Wood. One ball and one strike to him. Halliday's 1 1. That's outside the low. Wood takes high again, 3 1. What's it like for a pitcher to come back out after sitting out for half an hour? Due to a long inning, is it? Do you have to feel like you need to warm up some again? Oh, I'm sure that uh, it's a little different. I mean, you, know, you have to warm up a little bit. You know, you sit over there and on a warm day like today, maybe not so so bad, but yeah, it, something you have to deal with. Three, two wood fouls it back. That's why I couldn't hold that ten run lead in Philadelphia all those years ago. Yeah, I heard about that. I just couldn't get loose after that. 3 2 again from Halliday. And again, it's fouled back by Brandon Wood. Last night, Brandon Wood hit his first home run as a Bunko, came in the fourth inning on a 2 2 pitch. And this one just kept on carrying. Ibanez ran out of room. Brandon Wood touched them all. And he strikes out on the 3 2 pitch here, one down in the fifth. Roy Halliday, very tough when he gets the lead. His four complete games this season is more than 22 other teams in baseball have. He is tied with the Rockies, Angels, Mariners, Cardinals, Rays, and the Buccos, who as teams all have four complete games from their staff. What did he throw against us last year? 133 or 34 pitches in a complete game? He did. 132 pitches, actually. Just to so be dead that. accurate. Yeah. It was somewhere in that yeah. category. 130 something. Still a lot of pitches. And uh, not too many guys are really allowed to throw that many pitches. They're up on the Clemente wall, looking back. As Brown takes strike two. And Brown goes down on strikes. Well, let's turn the clock back, May 29th. Roy Halliday, the 20th. Perfect game in Major League history. Florida Marlins were perfecto in front of their home crowd. You just don't see that every day. The Marlins presented Halliday with the pitching rubber later on. I like this. Nice classy thing to do. Pedro Siriaco. Haven't seen much of Pedro lately. Did pinch hit in the ball game Friday night. Pedro getting an at bat here against Halliday, and he hits this one up in the air to left field. Long run for the shortstop Valdez, but he won't get it. Well, with the Phillies for Roy Halliday in 32 starts in which the Phillies have given him a lead, his record is 27 and 3. Getting up there in the Nolan Ryan territory. The 0 2 to Syriaco. He hits one on the ground to Valdez. Three up and three down for the Pirates in the fifth. We're on to the sixth at PNC Park. 3 2 fills.
rotation. You got your righty, your righty, and your lefty. Kids That's having a, a great day here today. Game ball there in the middle one. Yeah. Well, as we watch the pierogies run around, let's check our Meadows Racetrack and Casino scoreboard. Game's going on around baseball right now. We see Boston ahead of Oakland 5 2 in the American League. It looks like Cheese Chester is ahead of the other pierogies right now. Yeah, they're, they're pacing themselves. Just pacing ourselves. They're going to go into their kick here pretty soon. Look at Cheese. He's starting to melt away. Yeah, see, Hannah's got the advantage of oh, she's using her purse. Using the foreign object. Yeah. Hannah hasn't won a lot of races this year. Evan Meek hoping to win some races as he comes on and takes over for Chris Resop, dealing to Wilson Valdez to start the Phillies half of the sixth. And Valdez, a little number right back to Meek. One down. Pirates hoping to get things back in order here because things just didn't go their way in the fourth and fifth. And Considering, and I mentioned it before, Bob, I'll say it again. Considering what happened in the fourth and fifth innings, the Pirates, frankly, are fortunate to have only given up three runs. Heck yeah. That situation in the fourth, uh, with a line drive up the middle, hit the umpire, turned into a dead ball. That saved us a couple runs, I'm sure. Yeah, the, the ball that, uh, what was it, Brown hit? Right down Just the hook, barely hooked foul. Home run depth. Well, Halliday takes a strike. Eight, eight, eight free passes. I mean, it's six walks and two hit batsmen. That's three to two. It could easily uh, it'll be seven or eight to two. Halliday to the right side. He's got himself a hit. Second hit of the year to Roy Halliday. Can't get him out. Now two for 30 on the year. One out single. Watch him uh, go through the bag like he's beating out an infield hit. <laughs> it's not used to the uh, the base hits. How they pretty good athlete. Played basketball in high school. Grew up in Denver suburb of Aurora. Victorino slaps this one foul. He was a multiple time all state performer there in both baseball and basketball. Another ball player likes to fish, Roy Halliday. And he's over there with Lyle Overbay. I went into the clubhouse today, talked to his former teammate. They played together in Toronto. I said, Tell me something about Halliday nobody knows. So well, he's got a fishing boat named Hall Pass. So why is it named Hall Pass? He says because that's the only time he gets to use it when he gets a Hall Pass from his wife. Yeah, I think that was a, that, that name is kind of self-explanatory. Yeah. But for the, the few who didn't get it, no. now they know too. And Victorino hammers this one foul. Just a strike, two and two. Yeah, I think we all know about those hall passes. Yeah. In fact, when uh, Halliday met his wife, whose name is Brandy, he had a shirt on, T-shirt on, that said, "We'll fish for food." That may have sealed the deal when she saw that. A little number that is going to be picked up by Meek. He'll take the out at first base. Two now, and Halliday. Goes over to second. So now Placido Polanco, who was 0 for 2 with a walk and a run score. The Phillies again have runner in scoring position. Not a lot of hits for the Phillies today, four of them. Seemed like they had the bases loaded a ton in the fifth. And through the fourth and fifth innings, when they had all those base runners, just one hit. 
Go back to Friday night's game, Bob, where Cole Hamels was the starting pitcher. The Phillies managed just six hits. And Hamels had a third of them. He had two. A lot of hits in there. I think we had one going into the ninth, didn't we? Yeah, Hamels pitched a one hitter through eight. Yeah. I mean, he had himself quite a game and still came up on the short end. He didn't get a decision out of it. That was the 12 inning game in which the Pirates would win two to one. Win last night six to three. The Pirates have already claimed a series victory. They'd like to get a sweep. Still anybody's ball game here. Top of the sixth. Three two. They not going to move up. Brown had all he could do to block that pitch. Yeah, there being two outs, no reason to take a risk at the third base, and it's a pitcher. Very few pitchers are aggressive base runners when it comes to moving up on balls in the dirt. Brown's getting a workout back there. Two outs, Halliday at second. Polanco, 316 hitter at the plate. He ropes one to left field. Halliday's going to get waved home. The throw will be not in time. And the Phillies lead it 4 to 2 on a two out RBI single by Polanco. Well, breaking ball down and away, kind of one handed it. Actually, that uh, worked out for the best. Ball kind of died out there in the grass. Gave Halliday time to get around third. Throw just a little bit offline, but I don't think it was going to make any difference. 31st run batted in for Polanco this year. And Ray Serge will come out and visit with the right hander, Evan Meek. Take a look at what is in store in the very near future. As we see our Nissan, the road ahead. Tomorrow is an off day, and back at it Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. All 6:30 starts for Pirates pregame, and the Mets are in for a wraparound series. Four Friday, Saturday night, Sunday day, and then Monday night. All the games right here on Root Sports. Friday night game. Make sure you tune in for all the games, obviously, but Friday night game is going to be interesting because of the Pirates Charities Auction. Bob always takes part in and makes up gifts. Daniel Mosk is loosening up. Yeah, that's what that uh, that visit was all about there. That was just to take some time off the clock. He wants to get uh, Moskus up just in case we don't get the out. We'll have him ready for Howard. Jay Suntley singled in his first time up. He's walked and hit into a fielder's choice since one for two. A lot of great prizes and raise a lot of money in that Pirates Charities auction Friday night. To the right side, that is into right field. And around second, heading for third is Polanco. Chase Utley's got a pair of hits. Back to back singles for the Phillies. Three hits off Evan Meek this inning. Yeah, we'll see now if I was right about that visit. That was about getting Moskus ready for Howard, and yep, here comes Clint. Job there, Jones, making sure that throw was through the cutoff guy. David Meek lifted from the ball game, and the rookie Daniel Moskis coming on.
Some of the Pirates pitchers today starter James McDonald. Roughed up and managed to get through four innings. And Evan Meek just coming off now. He certainly wasn't happy. Gave up a run on three hits through two thirds of an inning. Evan Meek not happy with the way things have gone for him this afternoon. Well, somebody's going to have to stay out there for a while and do some uh, do some pitching. Moscow is already the fourth pitcher that the Pirates have used. And, uh, we're just in the sixth inning. Still three more innings to go after this one. Well, the day off tomorrow. All hands on deck today. We figure. Well, Moscus. He is charged with getting out Ryan Howard. Two outs and runners at the corners for the Phillies. They've added another run this inning to make it a 4-2 game. Iron City Music presents Sky Blast featuring Huey Lewis and the News live in concert. Coming up Saturday after the Bucks take on the Mets at 7.05. Don't miss these American pop icons perform all their biggest hits. Proving hit to be square, the power of love. And Zambelli fireworks lighting up the sky after the game. Tickets are going fast. Make sure to get yours. Go to Pirates.com today. Iron City Music, Sky Blast, Huey Lewis in the news. Moskis pitch to Howard. Swing and a miss. He's been able to strand all four of the inherited runners that he has encountered this year. This is his second time up in the big leagues. And he's got Howard, nothing in two. Polanco at third base and Utley at first. Still don't understand this base running out of philosophy of Phillies. Nobody at third. You can have a lefty out there now. Utley takes off. And that one just a bit low, so he goes down to second uncontested. See that door to the bullpen? That's open out there. Somebody's got to close that. That's what happens when you're a rookie and you come on, you don't close the door behind you. Isn't there somebody supposed to close that? <laughs> uh, is, I think whatever fan is sitting there in that seat is supposed to push the door shut. That's their job. Kind of like being in an exit row when you fly. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you have responsibilities. Howard strikes out and Moscow strands two more. One run comes in on three hits. And the Pirates trailing 4 2.
Hey, we started it earlier in the game and continuing. Which prospect are you most excited to see in a Pirates uniform? One, Tony Sanchez. Two, Jamison Tyon. Three, Stetson Alley. 4 1 2, 4 1 2 to vote. One for Sanchez, two for Tyon, three for Alley. And here is our poll right now. Boy, how about that? Stetson Alley. Cowboy hat night. I can see it coming. It's a natural yep. on Stetson hat night when uh, he gets to the big league. Yep. He was a second round pick last year and has a flame throwing right arm. So 4 1 2, 4 1 2 to text your vote. Vote for Cowboy Hat Night. Xavier Paul takes a strike. Top of the order for the Pirates. Paul, Harrison, and McCutcheon. And Tyon has moved ahead. Yes, he has. As the votes come in, you'll see the percentage has changed. Still early. Outside, two and one. I like watching it change, so keep texting. Is that fair to say? The more you text, the more we can watch it change live in front of your eyes. Here's another strike to Xavier Paul. Count is even to the Pirates' left fielder. Paul came into the game hitting 315 since he was acquired from the Dodgers. Struggled as a pinch hitter a little bit, then in New York. Things started to pick up for him. Actually had hits in five straight at bats. Pulls it to the right side. Ryan Howard. Underhand toss to Halliday for the out. And Roy Halliday has been cruising since he got his first lead of the game. It's ten in a row now for Roy Halliday. Spent 12 seasons with the Toronto Blue Jays. Winning the American League Cy Young Award in 2003. Was a unanimous selection last year in the National League. I think when you have a guy that throws a perfect game during the regular season, then throws a no hitter in the postseason, did that against the Cincinnati Reds on the 6th of October. I think he was pretty much a shoe in. Josh Harrison is 0 for 1 with a sacrifice this afternoon. Couldn't vote on that postseason one. I think they have to do that voting. Yeah, but I think before with, the postseason, with what he did, and then you couple the the perfect game in there. Oh yeah, I agree. Just uh, his regular season stuff was totally amazing. He is the uh, best there is right now. He's 33 years of age. It was in Odessa, Florida. One and two to Harrison. Popped him up. Valdez backpedaling. That's out number two. That's 11 in a row set down. Well, you go back to that date in early October. Certainly one. Phillies or Reds fans won't forget for some time. He gets Brandon Phillips on a swinging bunt here, and Ruiz from his knees completes it. As you know, Bob, it's not only exciting to win a postseason game, but to win it like that? Incredible. Yeah, I would say that was a. One of the most am amazing postseason things that I have seen. That to be able to do that uh, is pretty incredible. I mean, that puts you in the same conversation with uh, like Larson doing the perfect game uh, in the World Series. Right, Don Larson in 1956. It's not quite the same deal, but it's like I said, it puts you in that conversation. <laughs> one of the all-time great achievements. Larson did it for the Yankees against the Brooklyn Dodgers. Foul ball down by the Potash Well. Dan's hiding in there. There he is. 
Yeah, that's two today. That's two, but you haven't caught one. Well, better to be safe than sorry. Two balls and two strikes. It's like being behind the glass at a hockey game, isn't it? Oh, there you go. Three and two to McCutcheon. They're trying to get something going here and end this string of 11 straight set down by Halliday. Pirates get out to a 2 0 lead in the first and a two run home run by Neil Walker. His eighth well, leads all National League second baseman and runs batted in with 39. Payoff pitch. Maybe pitch number 90, but it seems like he's getting better with every pitch he throws. Ball four. And the Pirates get a base runner. They need a little little crack or something to get us going again. See what's happening in the minors today. A continuation of a triple A game last night, won by Syracuse over Indy. And in game two. 2-2 two, two in the fourth. Rudy Owens four innings pitch. Bradenton. They are trailing two to one in Port Charlotte against the Stone Crabs. Aaron Baker two for two with a double and a run batted in. Walker one for two. The way that it looked early on, the Pirates getting two hits in the first, another in the second, another in the third, that they would. Start piling up a few hits here and there. Halliday's coming off back to back starts in which he has given up 10 hits or more. Never in his career has he gone three starts giving up 10 hits or more. You know, Walker took a pitch that was up and in and clubbed it out of here. Files it off. We'll go back to the first inning. Xavier Paul aboard. Two strikes he was able to get on top of that one. That's normally a hitter with two strikes trying to be a little on the defensive side. You can, especially when you throw as good as uh, Halliday, you can throw one by him up and in. Not that time. Walker looking for some more two out magic. He represents the tying run. Again outside. Now Andrew McCutcheon can take off with the pitch. Lyle Overbay waiting on deck. Three balls, two strikes. McCutcheon takes off, and Walker strikes out looking. Well, the Pirates had the tying run to the plate. And Walker down on strikes. That pitch just paints that corner at the knees. 4 2, Phillies after six.
Hardest working mascot in baseball. Like he was about to go scuba diving. Yeah. Big air tank on. Yeah, the apparatus he is able to show off around the ballpark. Pretty All interesting. Dials, knobs, pressure gauges. Well, Libanez takes a strike from Daniel Moskus. Moskus out of Clemson University. Former first round pick of the Buccos. And the old one. And Ibanez lifts this one into right field. Garrett Jones circling around it. And make the catch and there's one down. Next Sunday, the Pirates will be taking on the Mets at 135. It's a kid's day, all kids 14 and under. Get the Pirate Parrot Cruise for a pure bobblehead. Thanks to Highmark, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Family fun zone on Federal Street before the game. Stay after and run the bases for the kids. And that's thanks to HK Anderson Pretzels. Pirates.com gets you tickets. Pirate Parrot Bobblehead coming up next Sunday, a week from today. And once the parrot gets his own bobblehead or it gets this newer edition of the bobblehead, his, his head's going to swell a little. I think, I think uh, it's swollen enough. I don't know if it can get any bigger. It is big as it is. You're right. Two out of Ruiz. Ground ball is short. Brandon Wood plays it off the backhand and throws him out. I'll tell you though, as a, as a group, you know, most of the uh, different uh, characters around baseball that you have, they're all they all they all have a big head, don't they? I would say can so. You, can you think of one that's not big headed? Well, the biggest heads are in Washington. The presidents. Oh yeah. Well, they should be. They were president at one time. I mean, they pulled well, they them down off Mount Rushmore. They have a reason to have a big head. Yeah. Dominic Brown takes strike one. Like, like Mr. Red. I mean, why has he got such a big head? Well, because it's round, like a baseball. And most of our heads are not round like a baseball. You might. Come across a person maybe once in your life that might have one like that. But uh, Mr. Red at Cincinnati's got kind of a pumpkin head with seams on it. 0 2 pitch. Atlanta, they have the uh, tools, right? The uh, racing tools, hammer and the drill, saw, right? What's the fourth one? Paintbrush. Is the fourth one and Brown. Get down ball. Get down right ball. ball. And that's going to be you. off the wall. And Brown is going to stop at second base with a two out double. Whew. That was going to be a close one. That was close but no cigar right for where Brown. That yellow line comes down from the top of the Clemente wall. To the shorter fence. And uh, I was a little worried it was going to hit on the left side of that line. We'll watch it. Whoa, it did hit on the left side of the line, but just below the home run fence. That was close. And Charlie Manuel, he's going to want the uh, the umpires to go look at the same replay we did. And, and I can see why, because it, he might be going to, you know, think that that ball hit back on the gray wall right back in there. Well, wow, that hit the railing. Yeah, but I mean, he might think he hit the gray wall right. in the back, so he wants the umpires to take a look at it. Uh, I, I totally understand why he would want this uh, to be reviewed. Because if it hits that gray wall in the back, it's a home run. Just a couple of inches from going out, but it will be a double. And the umpires conferring, and they'll determine whether or not they'll go check the replay, and that's what they're going to do. Sent over there by home plate umpire Angel Hernandez. And they will see the same thing we just saw and you've just seen. And then Dominic Brown will settle on at second base. Yeah, that clearly hits a, I think maybe just an inch below that railing. Yeah, that one really shows it the best. And you can certainly understand why Charlie Mann would want to get a look at it. Because again, they're at field level on the first base side. And if you have replay, why not use it? If you can use it to your advantage, 
or challenge it, fine. But one thing about replay is that the manager for whom the call goes against is not supposed to argue or question after the fact. Once the decision has been made by replay, that's it. But we've seen managers come out slowly and well, that, kindly they, and they're, trying they're, to inquire as politely as possible. Well, they're, they're arguing a placement of the runners is what they, they're yeah. allowed to argue afterwards. Right. And it, it does slow things down when they do that. But at this point in time, there will be no argument. It's used to determine fair or foul, fan interference, or a ball leaving the playing field. Managers can't demand a replay review. And the decision to reverse the call is made by the crew chief, which in this case would be Joe West. Wilson Valdez will be walked to get to Roy Halliday. Glenn Hurdle making a note. Phillies a two run lead here. Last year when the Phillies came in they played a four game series and the Pirates took three of them. Since PNC Park opened 11 years ago. The Pirates are 22 and 12 against Philadelphia. And a fourth wide one. And that'll put Valdez down to first base. And Roy Halliday with a base hit. And a run scored. Scored an insurance run in the sixth. Came in on the base hit by Placido Polanco. Moscus facing Roy Halliday. Thirty sixth straight start with at least six innings pitched. Call him a workhorse. That's the definition of one right there. Clint Hurdle expected that today. Chad with him before the game. He said, This is what you get with this guy. We understand that. He said, The Philadelphia bullpen probably won't be that active today because he's going to go deep. And remember a game last year on the 18th of May when he was out there and the Pirates would win that game 2 to 1, but he was out there in the ninth. Charlie Manuel came out for a visit. Roy told him to go back. And Manuel barely got a word out, turned around, and came back to the first pace dugout in Philadelphia. Was that the 130 some pitch in? Or that was the one before it. Before that. The ball and two strikes to Roy Halliday. Two on, two out for Philadelphia. Moscos checks second and delivers one, two. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. Halliday waits the two two. Average all the way up to 067 from 036 with one base Cer hit. Certainly hasn't uh, hit like a O something hitter. Lights that one off. Usually, when you see that zero in front of a couple of numbers, it's going to be an easy day. The seventh, two out, two on. And Moscow's 2 2 pitch to Halliday is nubbed at the plate foul. The, uh, the one out he made, he drove Garrett Jones all the way to the Clemente wall. That was his first at bat in the third inning. 
James McDonald had faced four in the first, gave up a hit, retired the Phillies in order in the second, striking out two. Things were looking good for him. And then that was the second out of the third inning when Halliday flied to deep right. Oscar's working to get his opposite number out the pitch and Halliday finally swings and misses. Stretch time here at PNC Park. Pirates trailing by a pair of runs as Daniel Mosca strikes out Roy Halliday. It is a Sunday here. So we will take around this filled up ballpark today. Enjoy some of the sights and sounds and we honor America. With God bless America and also take me out to the ball game. to stand and join the Pirates and Major League Baseball as we remember the lives lost on September 11th, 2001, while offering support to our troops here and abroad. Here to lead us with God bless America is a trio from the Eisenhower Elementary School fourth grade chorus. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. We invite you now to stand, follow the bouncing Eaton Park smiley cookie, and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. His former Toronto teammate. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, Pirates down by a pair. Trying to come back and sweep the Phillies. They've already taken two of the first three here. Here's the pitch on the way. And over Bay. Sharply hit ground ball. Backhanded by Utley. And quickly one down in the Pirates' seventh. Running out of outs, we got to do something here pretty soon. The Phillies actually have uh, action in their bullpen right now. That surprised me a little bit. It's like Jose Contreras is up and throwing. Halliday still under 100 pitches, barely. Garrett Jones, the hitter. Well, Halliday probably turns behind and doesn't like to see activity. He's got that old school mentality of he wants to finish what he starts. He has done so more than anybody in baseball this season with four complete games. No shutouts, however. Still, that's a lot of innings. Jones takes outside, two balls and a strike. 
Big night tomorrow for the Pirates. They draft. The Pirates have the number one overall pick. Usually, if you get the number one overall pick, you hope it be an impactful player. And this isn't one of those years, Bob, where you have that clear cut guy like last year, Bryce Harper. The year before that, Steven Strasburg. Every once in a while, you just get that one guy that you know is the guy. This year, there's there's some options. Two ball, two strike pitch. And Jones fights it off foul. Yeah, we'll have to just wait and see. Now it works out what the Pirates decide to do. I'm sure right now they got a pretty good handle on what they're what they're gonna do. They'll let everyone else know soon. And Jones pops this one out to Polanco. He was shifted over by the shortstop position. Three of the, the big names here. Right-hander Garrett Cole out of UCLA. The left-hander Danny Holson from Virginia. And Anthony Rendon from Rice. Seem to be the three biggest names that come up. It's also a couple of high school guys that are pretty good. But I uh, figure maybe one of those three could be the Pirates pick at number one perhaps. Again, we're not going to know until tomorrow night. And the Pirates staff working at draft headquarters down at Pirate City in Bradenton, Florida. Have been working extremely hard in preparation for this draft. And it's not just for the number one. I mean, it's for all the picks that follow. And there are so many of them. And the guys that do all the player evaluations give their votes. And the staff puts it all together. Brandon Wood, a base hit to center field. the family with a lot of these draft prospects Trevor Gretzky who is out of San Diego White Smith Sean Dunstan Dante Bichette's kid is a pretty big kid out of Florida Sabrina's son Tyler and of course Bobby Bonilla's son Brandon all eligible for the draft this year I figure that they will be taken Steve Garvey's son Ryan do you think Trent Boris is going to have somebody represent him? Yeah, he'll probably just go alone. Grand nephew of Eddie Goodell, Kyle Goodell. How tall is he? I don't know. That's a good question. I'll we'll have to have somebody look that one up. Eddie Goodell was sent up there to walk. Here's Matt Diaz. Well, Diaz was described by Clint Hurdle earlier today as a backyard ball player. And, and he said that in a way meaning that, you know, he'll take a base on you. Just a hard nose, grinding type of player. He represents the tying run here in the seventh. Two one killing. And Diaz stays live. In case you don't know, Eddie Goodell, three feet seven inches tall. And his nephew, Kyle, who's eligible for the draft, is 6'4, 220. So he's twice the man his uncle was. In terms of size. He won't be going up there uh, to walk. It no. doesn't sound like a 6'4, 220. Uh -uh. It's hard to miss. You better be able to swing the bat. Full count now on Diaz. Brandon Wood at, their, at uh, first base. He'll be on the move with the pitch. Diaz still searching for that elusive first home run of the season. Payoff. And this one is clubbed down to third. Polanco backs up, sets his feet, strong throw. It's off the bat and gets away. Brandon Wood going down to third base. And the Pirates have the tying run aboard. Well, 
we've seen uh, some awesome defense over at the third base by Polanco. Obviously, this is uh, not one of the times he uh, was able to plant that back foot. It looked like uh, he had his feet set to make a good throw. But on that replay, it looked like uh, it was a ball that maybe Howard could have caught. Wood uh, able to get into third base. Then it looked like the ball was catchable on that did. one replay. I think he whiffed on it. I don't know if he would have got an out, but now Jose Tabata lines one. Oh, what a play by Chase Utley! Stealing one from Jose Tabata. My oh my oh my. Jose just about to light things up for the Pirates and Chase Utley shuts him down. Some highway robbery on the infield. Halliday loves it. Diaz that had hit for him. Derek Jones uh, stays in right. The outfield stays intact from how they were as starters. Jose Escano comes on now for Daniel Moscas, who went two pretty solid innings. Or an inning and a third, I should say. Came on to strike out Ryan Howard in the sixth, got him, then pitched a solid seventh. Escano up early. Come on, came onto the scene the first couple of times. He looked awesome. And ran into a little long ball trouble. Trying to feel his way along. It's been a long time since he's pitched at this level. He will face the top of the order for the Phillies. The Phillies have stranded 11 men today so far on base. One big issue with the Phillies right now, just not scoring a ton of runs, not getting a ton of hits. They have seven hits today, out, out hitting the Pirates seven to six, but at the same time, just not getting a lot of runs as a result. Brandon Wood throws out Victorino one away. But believe me, nobody around the National League is crying for the Phillies right now. They sit 10 games above 500 in the first place, two games ahead of the Florida Marlins. Yeah, certainly. Everybody's, uh, I think, favorite team when the season started to uh, represent the National League in the World Series. They have all the big names. Very balanced lineup when everybody is hitting like they have in the past. They have a very balanced lineup with the power and speed. Guys that hit for average. Of course, their uh, starting rotation is outstanding. 
Polanco drove in an insurance run in the sixth, scoring Roy Halliday with a base hit. One ball, one strike. Seems like they're fairly deep on the bench as well. Jimmy Rollins not playing today, still suffering the effects of the foul ball he took off of his right knee in last night's game. And with Rollins out, Utley playing today. Utley originally scheduled for a day off today. And the Pirates wish Utley had the day off today, considering the play he made on Jose Tabata in the top or in the bottom of the seventh, I should say. Saved at least one run. Utley with a pair of hits today also. So it would have been a good day for him to take off. That's one of those uh, deals where it's kind of like a guy makes a great play, always leads off. Well, no, he doesn't always lead off, but you notice it when it happens. A lot of times when a guy's not supposed to be in the lineup, and he is, watch out for that guy. Scania has filled up the count of three and two. Somebody you know, gets hurt, last minute scratch, somebody goes in there. It's pretty amazing how, how many times that that player has a big day. Three two pitch to right field and another hit for Polanco. Time to check out today's the Home Depot doing more on defense. Utley a great jump on that ball. Very quick first move, putting him in position to make that fine play. Holiday loved it. He's fired up. And uh, even Tabata, a little tip of the cap. The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. One out and one on for Chase Utley out of UCLA. He was a teammate and remains a very good friend of Garrett Atkins, who was in spring camp with the Pirates, former Colorado Rocky and Baltimore Oriole. They both played together at UCLA. And a ground ball into right field, and Chase Utley has had himself a three hit afternoon. Three singles and Utley's reached base all five times. Times he didn't get a base hit, he walked and scored, and then reached in a fielder's choice. And that'll bring up the big man again. He has been up in some positions to do some damage this afternoon. He could have a whole truckload of uh, RBIs. Ray Sears is going to go out and visit. Sears bringing a message out to Jose Escano and the message we got from Matt today, Bob, for you. Do you think the Diamondbacks can maintain their current pace? Well, yeah, they, they can, but what do I think they will? I think. Is probably the what Matt's going at here, and I'm going to say no. I don't think they will. I think that the, the superior pitching that the Giants have will, in the end, have them winning the West again. That, that's that's my guess. The Diamondbacks a half game in front of San Francisco as we start activity today. They've won two in a row, eight of their last ten. But that's why you have to play them. It's, Everybody has their opinion. Mine just is that, uh, that proven pitching in San Francisco will lead the way over the course of six months. Ryan Howard was up at a big spot on the sixth, and Daniel Moskis was called upon, and he struck him out. Two on with one out. And 
Piscano. The 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Will be interesting though to see what the Giants do. Maybe uh, coming up here soon in the month of July when trades start happening, they might go a little early trying to get some offense to replace uh, what they lost when Posey got hurt and out for the year. That's a little bit of a question mark on that Western Division. Pitch away from putting Howard on here. Escano dangerously close to loading the bases for Raul Ibanez. Traffic on the Allegheny today. Where does that boat begin? It's like a train. Swing and a miss. Took a wave at the 3-0 pitch. Sounds like a train too. That bit. Big old barge heading down there. Empty. Well, that's got to be hard to turn or stop or do anything quickly at all. How do you stop? Got to hope everybody better stay out of his way. Strike two to Howard. Console Energy tug. Is that the Vulcan? You know what that says? Yep. Yeah, the Vulcan. You can tell by the pointy ears. Randy Tomlin's changeup. That's what he nicknamed it, the Vulcan. <laughs> Comes the payoff pitch now from Jose Escano, and Howard bangs it foul. You ever name any of your pitches? No. Oh, the Terminator, nothing like that. <laughs> Certainly not the Terminator. <laughs> By Jimmy Rollins Friday night, but he got it just on the side of the knee. Three two pitch. And Howard lines at the center field. That's a base hit. Around third comes Polanco and he will score the Phillies fifth run of the game. RBI number 44 for Ryan Howard. First hit today. Actually, it's his 45th. About the singles. Well, that's going to chase Escano out of here. He gives the ball to Clint Hurdle, and we've got another pitching change at PNC Park. Pirates down by three runs. Five two.
Great pictures once again from the AGH cam here this afternoon. Game three of this three game series Pirates and Phillies coming up our root sports watch. Day off tomorrow and then Tuesday Wednesday Thursday the Arizona Diamondbacks the National League West leaders come in and the Mets for four around the weekend. Back on the road Houston and then interleague play continues for the remainder of the month. Cleveland for three. I'd like to see a lot of Buccos fans make that drive up there. And then Baltimore at home the Red Sox and then off to Canada to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Jose Veras replaces Jose Escano. One out. Phillies with a run in this inning. Escano went just a third of an inning, gave up three straight hits. Polanco driven in by Ryan Howard. Howard with two RBIs today. Raul Ibanez, who drove in his 1,000th career RBI in the fourth inning with a sacrifice fly. Nice play. One handed nachos in one hand baseball in the other. I don't think he spilled a chip or a drop of cheese. Now that's a good place to try and get the ground ball because it the field is actually elevated from where you're standing so you don't have to reach very far. You're only reaching down to about where your knee is. It'll give you a little help down the line. The bouncer foul. It's easy to stay down on a ball. And uh, you know, the ball girl hands you the ball. That's the easiest way to get one. Oh, nice little pickup on that one. Not so much on the other one. Nothing in two. He's trying to deliver. Breaking pitch and landed outside. Well, the ball girls have to have either high school or college softball experience. There will be some ball players. We'll get them from a lot of the local colleges. One and two to Ibanez. Like Snyder trying to. Motion out to Varus that he wants to go through the signs again. Maybe change his mind or just want to reconfirm that they're on the same page. And a ground ball to Overbay. Nope. Wraps up off his glove. Everybody's safe. A bad break for Lyle Overbay. And now the base is full of Phillies again with one out. We're going to call that an error. Well, had a, even a, a shot at a double play if he would have came up with that cleanly. It was leading him right over towards second base. Peace today. One on over Bay and then Polanco charged with an error for the Phillies. Base is full and Carlos Ruiz stands up and takes a curveball for a strike. Ruiz has been hit by a pitch twice today by two different pitchers. J Mac got him in the fourth, Resop got him in the fifth. Coming to Ruiz. Popped him up. Back of the plate. Snyder fighting the sky. To make the catch. For out number two. Play by Snyder. Yeah, he's looking straight up into that sun. Right behind the plate. You can uh, look at his shadow is right underneath him. So you can. Get an idea of what he had to try and fight. Get the glove up there. It was best to shield the sun. It's 
So Dominic Brown waiting. And Jose Veras set to deliver. Ball tip into the glove of Snyder for a strike. Well, that for a hat comes with its own snack. Yeah, a little cupcake. Harris trying to bear down now on Brown, the pitch. One and one. Phillies fans here, a lot of them as we've been talking about throughout the weekend, and they got quiet Friday, got quiet Saturday. Kind of quiet here, even though their team has the lead. Brown is swinging a miss. Out in front of the change. The Phillies are kind of well, not kind of, they are. Counting on Dominic Brown uh, down the line to be a middle of the lineup hitter. Maybe they can drive the ball out of the ballpark and try to provide him with a lot of RBIs. And now the one two. Count even two balls and two. Certainly starts. has the size for it. In there, you know, you're talking about a guy replacing Jason Worth. Big, strong outfielder who can hit. I mean, Worth a right-handed hitter. And here Brown, a left-handed hitter. Worth ended up getting $125 million from the Washington Nationals, in spite of the fact Garrett Jones had more RBIs than he did last year. Swing and a miss, and Brown down on strikes, and Jose Veras comes in, gets the job done. One run comes in, 5-2 fills. Roy Holiday really uh, was at his best this afternoon. Gave up those two runs early on on the Walker home run and then just dominated the rest of the game. Lots and lots of strikeouts and can even play a little defense. Cover no run first base. But uh, when you're going up against the, the best pitcher in the league, some days it's going to be just like this. And a pretty good reliever here, Jose Contreras. Former member of the Cuban national team. Affected from Cuba and has come to the United States and done very well in the big leagues. And Contreras will face the top of the Pirates order. I wonder if they're talking to each other on the phone. I don't know. And he could just turn around and talk to her. Back in the turnpike traffic. Can 
Contreras went two thirds of an inning on Friday night backing up Cole Hamels. And we take it out. Paul, a foot race to the bag, and Ryan Howard beats him there. One down. Here comes Josh Harrison. Harrison without a hit today, 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. He will face Contreras with the Cuban national team. Contreras played seven years and built a record of 117 and 50 with a 2.82 earned run average. Defected in 2002 in October during the America Series tournament in Mexico. And was signed immediately by the Yankees. One zero. Goes to two zero now. On Josh Harrison. Andrew McCutcheon on deck. I need to get Josh back on the hit parade. It's Average has dropped quite a bit from uh, New York. Well, when he made his debut against the Mets, things went pretty well for him. Let's see McCutcheon. Two years ago last night, he made his major league debut, also against the Mets. Two and two now to Harrison. And Harrison with two out of four with a run batted in in his debut in New York. That's one thing to make your big league debut. It's another to do it in New York. Harrison wasn't phased. After the game, on the team bus, Clint Hurdle presented him with a lineup card, and his teammates gave him a nice round of applause. And Harrison to the gap in left center field. That's going to get down and almost past Ibanez. Harrison running for second. He's there with a double. First major league double for Josh Harrison. His first hit at PNC Park. Yeah, this one didn't get through either. The ball was cut off by the outfielder, so he had to run for it. Look, he never even looked down for that bag. He knows right where it's at. Either that or he just got really lucky. <laughs> well, one thing, he's got his own helmet now. He didn't get the opportunity to wear his own helmet when he was on the road. He was probably uh, getting to where he might want to throw Beek's helmet back on. It was the old, it was 0 for 7 since uh, he put on the helmet with the 62 on the back. Yeah, he grabbed Evan Meek's helmet off the rack. It fit him, and when he started hitting, Meek told him, no, you keep wearing it. And McCutcheon takes high for a ball. And uh, you know, I know, a lot of players would have kept wearing it <laughs> as well as he did in New York. Stretch by Contreras. And that's in on the hands. Yeah. Two and all. Superstitious punch. Daniel McCutcheon starting to loosen up. Only he and Joel Hanrahan are left in the Pirates' pen. Tip for a strike. James McDonald, Chris Weesop, Evan Meek, Daniel Moskis, Jose Escanio, and Jose Veras have all pitched today. See it right there in the lineup card. And McCutcheon belts one down to left field. That's going to get Harrison in. And the Pirates back on the board for the first time since the first inning. Andrew McCutcheon, RBI number 32. It is five to three. And that brings the tying run to, you know what? Home point. Pretty much uh, middle of the strike zone at the letters. Harrison scoring easily is that ball. Took Ibanez toward the line. Uh, Charlie Manuel comes out 
and relieves Jose Contreras of duty. Antonio Bastardo, the left hander, will come out to face Neil Walker. What a great weekend here at PNC Park. Fans having a blast, and a lot of them. Today, 35,505, 108, 807, fourth largest for a three-game series here at PNC Park. And the battling Bucks trying to battle their way back here in the bottom of the eighth. Well, when Halliday left the game, it kind of gave everybody a little hope. Maybe something uh, different can happen because he was on today. And now. Because of that McCutcheon base hit, Walker steps in with the tying run. That'll make Neil hit from the right side. That's all right. He can hit one out of here from this side just as easy as the other one. Bastardo pitched on Friday night, the 12 inning game. Walker fouls the first one back. Nothing in one to Neil. Got his first hit of the series back in the first inning. Well, he pounded one out of here to deep right center field. Scoring Xavier Paul. One out double by Josh Harrison. His first big league double. Andrew McCutcheon drove him in with a base hit. One and one. Activity in the pen. Michael Stutes. And Walker popped up. Shallow center. Jay Sutley still in the back pedal. And coming on is Victorino. Well, he's the center fielder. It's his ball if he calls for it. Everyone else has to give way. Looked like it was going to be interesting there for a moment. Well, with Dominic Brown bearing down on Chase Utley and Victorino kind of sizing the ball up, yeah. If Victorino doesn't get to it or Utley backpedals a few more steps, that would have been fairly interesting. Well, nobody really had a, a true beat on it, but as soon as Victorino started yelling, I got it. You can see his mouth moving there, and that tells everybody else to peel off. Center fielder overrules everybody. So now Overbay representing the tying run. Facing Antonio Bastardo. McCutcheon at first. Looking ball outside, 1 0. Overbay, nice night last night. Single, double, triple. Scored a run, drove in a run.
talking to him about his triples. He doesn't get a lot. He had two last year with Toronto, 11 for his career now. One and one. Pirates looking for some late inning magic this afternoon. Third game of this three game set after winning games one and two. Trying to come back here in game three. And Over Bay gets ahead of the start. Oh, two and one. Garrett Jones on deck. Another guy with some good power. Strike. Two and two to Overbay. Overbay struck out in the first, fly out to center in the fourth, grounded the second in the seventh. Pirates need a clutch hit now late in the game. And the 2 2 is nubbed past the mound. Could be trouble. Polanco throws. He's safe. And a tying run aboard. Well, Pistardo wouldn't have been anywhere near this ball. I think Polanco makes the play. But he kind of slowed down there. You saw him pick it back up after he saw the ball go by him. But if Polanco does not see the pitcher, if the pitcher is nowhere in the picture, he's going to cut straight for that ball much quicker than he did. He kind of laid back a little bit, uh, and that gave Overbay just a, a little bit of a break. And just beats it out. But I think Blanco was looking for maybe a deflection. He, you know, there was something going to happen. He didn't think that ball was going to come through plane, and he was surprised by it. Garrett Jones takes ball one. And if there was ever a guy in need of a big hit, it's Garrett Jones. Struggled in the month of May. Hasn't hit a home run since the second of May. That was in San Diego. There's only one home run at home this year. And Jones takes a healthy cut and misses. And Garrett's got six on the year, five of those on the road. He'll just take a single right now. I would love to see a home run, but off a tough left hander like this. Just base hit, keep the inning going. Cut it to one run, the lead the Phillies have, make it a 5 4 ball game. Strike wow. call by Hernandez. That sure looked like it was off the plate. Wow. We'll take a look at the strike zone. But I don't think I really need to see it to know that that was outside. So a gift for the Phillies there. One and two the count. Two out and two on. And Jones looks at that one for ball two. Stargo trying to get him to chase one, and Garrett wouldn't buy it. It's 143 against lefties. All of his home runs have come against right handed pitching. Stargo set now the 2 2 delivery to Garrett Jones. And he struck him out. Well, the Pirates leave the time run on. We're on to the ninth. Philadelphia with a 5 3 lead.
on the North Shore this uh, weekend, but about the Three Rivers Arts Festival going on, drawing a lot of folks and seeing some of the great pieces of art, especially on a great weather weekend here in Pittsburgh. And then hopefully we'll have a spectacular summer the way this has started you know, weather-wise. Our right, text poll question. You continue to vote. 412-412. Text one for Tony Sanchez, two for Jamison Tayo. Three for Stetson Alley. Which prospect are you most excited to see in a Pirates uniform? Where are we at so far with that, you think? Well, it was pretty close the last time we looked. And right now, Jamison Tyon at 37%. Stetson Alley starting to pull away a little bit. Yeah. So you can make the, make the percentages move. Text us now. Still time to do it. 412, 412, 1, 2, or 3. Sanchez, Tyone, or Alley. Tomorrow night, a big night. There'll be a new number one pick in the Pirates family after tomorrow. And a lot of new Pirates employees. If you will. Top of the ninth, 5 3, Philadelphia. For some of them, it'll be let the negotiations begin. That's right. Strike is called to Wilson Valdez. You know, some of the players that get drafted or tell me where to sign. <laughs> some of them they don't take it to the last day. And that'll be mid August. All of the draft picks and all the draft information will be recapped on Tuesday night starting at 630 with Pirates pregame. Two poke foul. Get a comprehensive look at all of the draft information at that time. Daniel McCutcheon ahead of Wilson Valdez. And he's lost it with a base hit. Lead off single for Valdez in the ninth. On an 0-2 pitch, left it right down the heart. This will bring up a pinch hitter. And Francisco will hit next, but see a 0-2 pitch here. Yeah, we got that uh, run back at the bottom of the eighth. Sure want to return the favor. Right now, just two runs down. That's not that bad. You get one guy on, boom, tying runs at the plate. But to stop him here. Francisco takes a strike. Last night, Francisco struck out against Charlie Morton. Morton stood him up with a curveball that Francisco took for strike three. And Francisco said after the game, I didn't know that guy had a curveball. I had forgotten about that. I forgot it at a bad time. Go to first base, and Wilson Valdez gets back. But Charlie doesn't throw the curveball all that often. And when he does, it can be surprising. You see fastball after fastball after fastball, sinker after sinker after sinker. Charlie picked up his sixth victory, the most wins he's ever had in a single season. On the corner for a strike to Francisco. And now McCutcheon ahead 0-2 on the second hitter of the center. Nothing in two. And the pitch to Francisco. Valdez takes off. Ball hit to the right side. Hit and run. Executed perfectly for the Phillies. And they now have runners on the corners. And nobody out. This ball was hit hard to the right side. That's for sure. Back to back hits on two strike pitches. Yeah, 0 2 pitches. So Valdez taking off on the move and then Francisco hitting it in the vacated hole with Walker covering. Now the infield drawn in. Nobody out. And 
Victorino. He has one hit today, and that was in the third inning. He didn't walk in the fifth and score. And in spite of what might be happening with the Pirates pitchers today, you got to look at a stat. 14 of the last 16 starts, the starters have given up two earned runs or fewer. That is still an impressive statistic. Wave and a miss. And for the third straight hitter, he's 0 2. He lost Valdez and lost Francisco and McCutcheon. Trying to get Victorino here. Oh, two pitch. We'll wait. Just checking to see if Francisco is going to be on the move. Brandon Wood trying to take away the middle. Fired shortstop today. Oh, two. This one a slap foul and out of play. Remember a couple of years ago, Bob, when the the fan vote for the All Star game. Shane Victorino won that for the National League. They go door to door or something like he, that. He did. He, uh, of course, that was more of a publicity stunt. It wasn't like he spent all day doing it. But oh, I, yeah, he no, went. No. Uh, he went door to door, asking fans to go online and vote for him. But it was not really door to door; just publicity stunt. It was maybe door to door, and then he said, "Enough. You got your film. Get the film you need." All right, I'm out of here. Oh, he went to a few houses. And his broom, and hopefully the Pirates can stop the bleeding here and come up with some runs in the bottom of the ninth. They're going to have to do something special to not give up a run in this instance. One and two now to Victorino. Strikeout, double play, something along those lines. Slaps on the left center field. It's going to get another run in. So Daniel McCutcheon has come in, had two strikes on each of the three hitters he's faced, and lost all three to a base hit. It's now six to three, Philadelphia. He's only thrown one ball. He's still 13 pitches. 12 of them have uh, either been strikes or been put in play. Pirates don't have a lot of options behind him right here. Only one. And Rand's the only guy left. Well, he's uh, pitched two days in a row. I don't think they're uh, wanting to use him right now. I think it's going to have to be McCutcheon. Two on, nobody out. Polanco to center. And McCutcheon take care of that. Francisco will hold it second base. Pirates get the first out here. Utley, the guy that was supposed to have the day off. Wish he would have taken it. Reach base all five times. He has three hits. The Phillies have stranded 14 men. Well, at least average uh, 244 now. All the way up. What was it like about a buck 80 to start the game? He started the series at 194. And, uh, 195 to start the day today. Pitch to Utley is in for a strike. The Phillies stranded 16 men on the 25th of May, but there's a caveat there. They played 19 innings against Cincinnati. And here they've stranded 14 through 8 plus. And a position player, today's shortstop, Wilson Valdez, ended up getting the win as a pitcher. Huntley flies to left field. Xavier Paul fighting the sun. He makes the catch. 
there are two down. But yeah, Valdez ended up with the win. He's in the 19th. They got nobody left to throw. Joey Votto flies out to Martinez in center field. And another fly ball out. Then after the game, the boys from Cooperstown called and said, hey, we want your game hat. So the, the hat right there. They just took off. Going to the Hall of Fame. See, it's not that hard. <laughs> to get in the hall? No. To, well, or it's to hard to get in the hall to <laughs> get out. He went out there and threw strikes. That's half the battle. That's part of the problem this afternoon uh, with the Pirates. You look out there, they've given up 13 hits, but there was an awful lot of free passes. And that hurt today. One for 11 in the series for Ryan Howard. That one was today in the eighth inning. He drove in his second run of the game, got another RBI back in the fifth with a sacrifice fly to deep center field, hit it into the north side notch. I'm pretty sure you mentioned it when he hit it. That's the only place in the ballpark that would have held that hit. Mm -hmm. Anywhere else, it's gone. Now it gets another base hit. And he's got his third run batted in. Francisco will come in to score. It is seven to three, Philadelphia. Daniel McCutcheon's been touched up for four hits this inning. Victorino over to third base. Raul Ibanez is batting with two down. Ray Serge will come out and just try to settle McCutcheon down. Yeah, kind of give him a little bit of a, a breather. Always thought these are like a 20 second timeout. Basketball just trying to stop the momentum. Okay, she missed it around Major League Baseball. Lance Berkman got a cortisone shot in his right wrist. He sprained it on the 18th of May. He's been unbelievable for St. Louis this year. Carlos Marmol blew a save in the ninth. And the Cards and Cubs tied at two. Former Cub Ryan Terrio, an RBI double. Help break that up. Adam Lind of the Blue Jays. Four for four. Pair of home runs. Three runs batted in. Jays beat the Orioles. Seven to four in the Battle of the Birds. And Brian Dunsing of the Twins. Eight innings. Four strikeouts. One walk. No runs. They blank the Royals. Six. Nothing. Ibanez takes a strike over the outside corner. A good rivalry in the central between the Cubs and the Cardinals going back a long time. Dodgers win again in Saint in uh, Cincinnati, by the way. Nine six. Country Joe West saying that's a ball. Didn't swing. One one ripped right down to Overbay, who will step on the bag for the third out. Two runs come in in the top of the ninth off Daniel McCutcheon. Last wraps for the Bucks. They trail seven three.
Labor's Day. Hudson against Correa Tuesday night, and then Zach Duke makes his return to PNC Park. He'll pitch against his good buddy Paul Mahalan. Josh Coleman here against Jeff Carstens on Thursday as the Snakes invade. Seven three, bottom of the ninth. Perfect day here in Pittsburgh, other than the score. Well, look at the skies. Puffy clouds in the distance. They talk about a great weekend, though. So Ryan Madsen, the closer, will come on. A great weekend, all in all. Pirates will take this series regardless of whether they come back here or not. Sweep would have been a bonus. Great attendance, largest crowd ever to see a game in this ballpark last night. 39,441. 35,505 today. And almost 109,000 for the three-game series. Brandon Wood will lead off. Pitch to Wood is outside for a ball. Wood had a base hit in the seventh. He's one for three. Takes a strike. Former Angel. Enjoying his time in the National League as he bangs another single to left. Lead off single for the Pirates and still with life. Not over till it's over. That kind of hurt us those two runs in the top of the ninth. Could have uh, avoided that. We have a tying run up there right now. That's why it's so important. But just means you got to get more hits. But Chris Snyder at the plate and Ronnie Cedeno will come out on deck. Bottom of the ninth inning. Nobody out. Pirates need four to extend the game. Inside that time, two and zero. Oh. Snyder entered after the seventh inning. Diaz hit for Dusty Brown. That's one pumped in there at 93 miles an hour. Brandon Wood off first base, and Snyder will take strike two. So far this season, Snyder with runners on base, 15 out of 44. 341 average. 2-2 two, two is low. 3 and 2. Right now the time runs in the dugout. Ryan Madsen on for the Phillies. A little wildness would help us out a little bit. Take a ball four right here. Fouled back. Madsen out of Moreno Valley, California, 6'6 and 202. He's 30 years of age. Drafted in 1998 in the ninth round. Payoff. And Snyder picks it up in the air. Wilson Valdez trying to handle it. And he does for the first out of the bottom of the ninth. Well, so Daniel had the day off today. We'll have to come up with pinch hit. And that is that. The bench is empty now. Only one guy. He used 24 of them. Oh, no, no, I'll take that back. We didn't use start rotation. No, we didn't use all 20. Well, the one guy of the guys that we have on the bench left. Hand to hand, that's it. But if somehow the Pirates tie this up, they might have to use somebody from the rotation. Well, hopefully we would take the lead. That'd be the best case. 
Well, if we take the lead, game's over. We don't have to use anybody. One and one to count. One one pitch. Sedano fouls it back. Well, news from St. Louis for the second straight day. Albert Pujols has hit a walk off home run to beat the Cubs in extra innings. 3 2 the final. Pujols, a dangerous man. And he is getting more and more dangerous by the day after a kind of a slow start. Sedano strikes out looking. Pirates down to their final out. Two guys on. Make it interesting. Xavier Paul. Back to back hits. He takes a ball low. Paul today singled and scored in the first. Had a sacrifice bunt in the third inning and then has grounded out twice since to Ryan Howard at first base. Strike called at the knees. Maybe right at the bottom of the kneecap. Josh Harrison hoping for an opportunity here. Two down, last of the ninth. The Phillies again stranded 16 runners. That's the most this season for a nine inning game. Check swing foul ball. They did strand 16 in a 19 inning game against Cincinnati. But considering they put seven runs up on 14 hits and still left 16 on base. That's. Probably a number that Charlie Manuel is going to circle and chew on all night. Here's the one two. And Paul pokes a foul. Stays alive as the Pirates are down to their final strike today. Paul trying to keep the Pirates alive in the ninth. Brandon Wood off of first base. He had a leadoff single. Matson stretching the pitch. And the dirt two and two. Back to the final opportunity here for Matson to get Paul. Paul trying to stay alive two and two. A 2 2 pitch from Matson. And this one again fouled off. So David Paul continues to get a piece after it, pitch after pitch. It's a beautiful thing that there's, you know, there's no clock. We just keep fighting, chipping away. Look what the Phillies did last night. They, they, in that game, what was that? Four runs down in the ninth inning, and they found a way to get the tying run up. Milwaukee has beaten Florida today, six to five. The Phillies win. They pick up a game on the mile. Inside corner, got it. Ball game is over. Madsen comes in, shuts the door, and the Pirates take two games out of three and win this series. Losing today, however, in the finale. By a seven to three score. Now it was a uh, a solid weekend, really, when you think about it. The two out of three against uh, a team like the Phillies is is pretty darn good. And, and anytime you go up against Halliday, uh, you you know it's going to be hard fought. You better not make any mistakes. Uh, the mistake today was our pitching staff was just too wild. Didn't throw enough strikes. Seven three, the final score on a beautiful day at PNC Park. Stand by. Pirates post game comes your way next.